Hey folks, Rick here from the La La Farm. Today we're going to talk about this contraption. Today, it's a beautiful day, blue sunny skies, but it's a little bit cool here, thus the jacket. We're going to talk about a chicken heater, a specific type of chicken heater today. This heat lamp. Now the heat lamp is something that when you go to, when you go and you first buy chickens, you know you gotta have a heat source, you've seen it before, you've read it online. This is generally what people get are these, in, are these, are these lamps that get upwards of 450 degrees um, to heat their chicks. Hold that thought. So what I got here is my handy dandy uh, infrared thermometer. 397 degrees and this thing's only been on for just a few minutes. Just like everyone else when they get chickens, or I should say everybody, most people when they get their chickens, um, they go out and they get this heat lamp. This is the one that they got, that they get because it's, it's by far the least expensive of all of the chicken heating or the chicken heater methods. And I'm gonna go over those in a subsequent video. It may be the next video or thereafter. That's up to Little Rick when he gets those uh, put up. But comparing the three types of heaters that we use in various scenarios. So most people know that when a chick is born, they don't have fully developed feathers as we understand feathers on an adult bird. They're born with a very fine, what's called down. Um, looks like hair, but it takes about a month for those feathers to fully, and some breeds even longer than that, a few weeks longer than that, but it takes about a month for those feathers to fully uh, fill in that bird so that they have um, good heat protection. They can hold their heat in with their own feathers. So there has to generally be in the first few weeks of birth for that chick, some form of supplemental heat source. One of the least expensive and really the most popular form of of heating sources for young chicks is this particular heating setup. How'd you like that? So this is, it doesn't even come in a box, this heat, but this is the lamp that, that we've replaced this in. This is the producer's pride, red heat bulbs, two pack, 120 volt, 250 watt bulb. This thing gets hot. So let's talk about the lamp itself. So this, fixture really is nothing more than a heat shield up on the top, this screen that's on the bottom which really protects the lamp that's in here from things getting into it. And then it's got, most of them will come with this cheap metal clamp right here, just a squeeze clamp. And that's the only thing that's protecting this lamp from impacting anything that you have under it. So there's some significant risks with this thing. So I've already measured the lamp temperature. It's upwards of 400 degrees. But here is the temperature that we have even on the outside casing. So this thing's only been on for a few minutes and it's 90 degrees. So imagine this thing running all day long. Imagine something hitting it from underneath and just knocking this clamp loose. Now there is this hook. This hook also can be used, uh, but it's also really flimsy and it just fits through the neck of this thing. We personally, when we use this, we're using carabiners wrapped around the cord to secure this thing in addition to that clamp to make sure that it doesn't fall. So by far the biggest advantage of this heater, by far, is cost. And that's what pulls a lot of people into purchasing this unit. Now, we have used it. We burnt, when we first started when we first started brooding out chickens, this is the lamp that we bought. And I immediately realized this thing gets really hot. So we, within days of starting using this thing, replaced it with a, with a non-lamp based system. And we're gonna cover that in a, in a subsequent video. Um, but that's probably the biggest advantage. In my opinion, again, all of this is my opinion. If it's research based, I'm gonna tell you that in the video. My opinion is this thing is a very risky and dangerous unit if you're using it in your home or in another structure. Um, if you've got 15, 10, five chickens that you're trying to brood out, is your house really worth the value of putting this thing in there and running the risk of it falling down in there and starting your house on fire? Google YouTube videos related to, um, related to heat lamps and you're gonna see 
um, many, many videos related to structure fires because of this unit. The disadvantages of using this unit far outweigh the heat advantage that you will get. Let's talk about some of those issues. Disadvantage number one is this is by far the least reliable of all of the consumer-based heating options that, that are generally available on the, on the market. This relies upon simply a screw-in incandescent bulb. And as an example, when we were setting this, this mock-up up today, um, the light was blown in it. So Rick grabbed one of the spare bulbs in the producer's pry box that we've got because we do use this in certain applications, but the light was blown. So he screwed it in and then he held it for just a few seconds after he got it screwed in and then his hand came off really quick. He said, wow, that is hot. It gets hot really, really quick. And the longer it sits there, the hotter it gets. Number two, because this lamp is fixed, now this is the space where your chicks would be down here. The heat zone is from there to there, from the bottom of whatever you're brooding your chicks in to the base of this light. That's the heat zone any wind or air or, or things that can go through this that's going to interrupt that heat transfer down in this zone um, will dysregulate your heat, meaning it becomes very difficult unless you keep this really low, which is even more dangerous, um, to regulate a constant heat temperature in this because it becomes much more susceptible to whatever the ambient temperature is in the room where you're brooding your chicks. For the first six weeks, of your chick's life, it's really important to regulate their temperature within a certain range. Just keeps them healthy and it keeps them uh, kind of on, a, on, a, on an even developmental trajectory. Similar to what they would get if they were sitting up underneath the mother hen if they were being natched, hatched out naturally. That doesn't happen when you're using artificial heat per se. They have to learn to regulate whatever the level of heat is that they need each chick does. So they will move in and out of that light source uh, to regulate the body heat that they inherently and genetically need. Number three is the fastening system used on this. So like I said, this is nothing but a pinch clamp. There's another metal clamp here that is really in contact with the light bulb if we wanted to use that. We, when we do use this, we use two carabiners with the, with the, with the cord kind of folded to hold that in place in addition to that clamp. So there's basically multiple redundancies to prevent failure when we are using this light. We don't use this light for our chicks any longer because of the risk that we found with adequately securing this thing. When we were using it, we were basically using a piece of wood over the top of the brooder, you know, with other hardware attachment. There was no way that this thing was going to drop. Now we just use an, a, a, an infrared heater and it works so much better. Um, we do use this in our goat heating barrel. So during kidding season, when our goats are born, we use this on the top of a plastic barrel. That's really the only application we use for these anymore. So the fourth reason is this metal casing. So it's, it's well over 100 degrees now. So this thing can actually, if you keep this on, this heats up over time, it will burn anything that touches it, whether that be the chicks that you're brooding out, whether that be kids within the house, or somebody were to trip and fall against it, um, this is going to be above the brooding source. So this is a really hot surface. So now let's get into some of the biomedical reasons that this heat lamp uh, may not be the best option as a heater for your newborn chicks. So using um, a continuous light source, and that's what this is, if we look up underneath it, that light continuously stays on. By using a continuous light source on your chicks, meaning 24 hours a day, there's some absolute bio medical issues that that, it, that that can cause with the normal development of your chicks. The first is difficulty differentiating between a day and a night cycle. So folks that aren't necessarily familiar with chicks or those that are, or chickens, learn that chickens will roam all day long. And I've been asked multiple times on various videos that we put out, well, how do you put your chickens up? You don't have to put your chickens up at nighttime. They are naturally around sunset going to return to the coop and begin nesting. Why? Because they have a very well-developed daytime, nighttime cycle that's internal of their bodies. When you have this on a, on a new chick, constant light, 24 hours a day, it interrupts their ability to differentiate light from dark. In this video, in the body of this video, all of these things, I'm talking about the biomedical, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a veterinarian. 
I'm a chicken owner that has a really significant interest in research. In fact, that's kind of my gig. Um, so all of the claims I'm talking about research, the biomedical issues, all of those, I'm going to put the resource, those links, those references that I'm using to make this video down in the body of this video. So if you want to go and get firsthand information or firsthand knowledge or want to say, Rick, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. Go read the research first before you do that, because everything that I'm talking about is substantiated in the literature. So this issue with continuous light, this was kind of studied as early as 1956, published in the journal. The Biological Bulletin in 1956 published a study that says continuous light in a brooder has found that that alters the rate of maturity causing cockerels or the baby roosters uh, to mature faster but causing pullets, which is the baby hens, um, to mature more slowly. So that light source can increase positively the roosters and slow down the developmental maturity of the hens. Um, Penn State University had published uh, a study finding that continuous light was also shown to delay the onset of egg laying in young hens. Well, most of us, when we own poultry, we own laying hens, we want them for the eggs. Well, if you're putting this lamp on there, there's a very good chance that this is what you're using 24 hours a day, that that egg production is going to be slowed down um, or delayed in how quickly it starts. The same study from Penn State also found that continuous light during those very early developmental months um, reduces the number of eggs produced by hens raised under a continuous lighting system. So not only are you gonna have them delayed, but it's also gonna be fewer in number. So the next kind of biomedical issue with using continuous light is higher rates of aggression in your chickens. Now imagine if you slept 24 hours a day in the light and you never had um, exposure to dark, you'd be in a pretty bad mood too. Well, scientifically, Scientifically, <laughs> that's little Rick if, you do, <laughs> if you're new to the channel. Just imagine if you had to sleep 24 hours a day under light, you'd be in a pretty bad mood. Well, scientifically, that's what can happen to a chicken under continuous light. Numerous studies have found that keeping a chick under continuous light can cause to, can lead to developmental problems with that chick's eyes. A lot of these studies have focused on one particular condition I'm going to look at my notes, make sure I get this right. Light-induced avian glaucoma. Um, now, what glaucoma is basically an increase of pressure um, behind the eye, which will cause kind of the eye to bulge out. Um, this condition is provoked by continuous light exposure characterized by enlargement of the chick's eye, increased pressure within the eye, and flattening of the cornea. Uh, leading to reduced vision and possibly even blindness in the future. Imagine you staying under continuous lights and that environment never changing for, you know, depending on how long you're rooting them, four to six weeks. So the research has shown that that type of condition can lead to significant vision problems with your chick. So here's the kicker with all of this stuff. So we've talked a lot about some of the negative attributes of using this type of lamp. Here's the kicker. All of these issues that we've talked about can and may very well be present in your chicks despite you using this lamp exactly as it is described in the manufacturer's instructions. As you would get in the instructions that come from the retailer big box store where you buy this unit. So all of the damage that you may do to the chickens, according to the research, um, could be realized despite you doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Or in other words, thinking you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So in closing, I'm not saying don't use this. What I'm saying is that use it judiciously, understand what the pros, what the pros are, what the cons are, um, and understand that there may be repercussions. Put it down in the comments for me, how you, what kind of style of heater do you use and why do you use it? Check out some of these other uh, chicken related videos and playlists that we've got. Remember folks, always treat others as you would like to be treated. Take care folks, happy heating.